Če grške opozicijske stranke Sirize. Hello, comrades and friends. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm very happy that I'm seeing that Strujana Levica is here, strong. I'm very happy to see that left is here in Ljubljana, united and promising as never before in Slovenia. We march ahead. This is not only a new party. This is a political alliance for hope. This is an, an alliance for the people. And this alliance proves that the left exists to unite, not to divide people. And it cannot unite people if it does not unite itself. This is the meaning of Struzen Alevica. And this is the same that we did in Greece with Syriza, the left radical coalition of the left. And our experiences shows that when the left unites, it does not simply add forces. It multiplies forces and political impact. And I'm sure that will also happen in Slovenia. Because your efforts springs not from party mechanisms alien to the people, but from the most energetic sectors of Slovenian society. It is rooted not in dark offices, but in the open sea of popular mobilizations. It is the political child of the Slovenian winter of discontent, same time last year. It's society in motion. And this is your response to the neoliberal zombies who breed corruption, austerity, unemployment, and poverty. This is the response of the social left to the old political establishment, which is withering away in Slovenia, in Greece, in Europe. Next May, in less than 90 days, it will be in our hands to throw them in the history's waste paper basket. Dear comrades, next May, each and every citizen in each and every corner of this continent holds our common future in her hands. If they vote left, Europe will turn left. And then the Eurozone crisis could be resolved collectively, fairly, and credibly and we could pave the way for Europe's balanced and viable growth. We could set the basis for the Europe of employment and justice. We will reject the failed neoliberal recipe for the crisis. Because the Eurozone crisis is a crisis of the neoliberal paradigm. It appears with different but similar phases, as debt crisis in Greece and as a banking crisis in Slovenia. A month ago, Oli Rehn, the commissioner, 
made it clear that at the beginning of the Greek sol solvency crisis back in 2010, Europe sacrificed Greece in order to save European banks, not in order to save Greece and Greek people. In order to save the Greek banks, but also the other major European banks. So Oli Ren admitted that the political establishment of Europe didn't want to have Greece's public debt restructured at, at that time. Because then, the European banks would need to pay for their excessive risk-taking with Greek bonds. They choose to cause an unprecedented in peacetime humanitarian crisis in Greece just to save casino capitalism in Europe. And in that way, they forced taxpayers in Greece just to pay for bank profits. And what is happening four years later? Now, they reject direct European stability mechanism, recapitalization of banks. They prefer to lend governments to rescue bankrupted banks at home, at least for the moment. And in that way, they force taxpayers in the South to finance bank profits in the South. So, one way or another, they force the South to pay for the banking system of the entire Europe. And I think that this cannot go on. Enforcing bailout and bail-in solutions, or a combination of both, in a recipe for crisis contagion and overall destabilization, and Greece with in Greece is a systemically important to the Eurozone cannot be testing ground for a combination of this kind. Nor could Slovenia be that. Looking at the Slovenia, I think that it seems a lot what happened in Greece. I'm afraid that with Slovenia's story the last years, I'm watching a film whose ending I know very well. And the ending is the Troika and the Memorandum. I'm afraid that Slovenia is on the slippery downhill of Greece and privatizing 15 key enterprises will only deprive the country from future income. It, it will not end the banking crisis, which slowly but steadily will evolve into a public debt problem. And unless Europe takes a decisive turn in May, Unless people vote for left and the United Left and the European Left come out of the election as strong as never before, the Troika will step in. But this is not the story of Greece and Slovenia alone. This is the story of the entire European periphery. And if we don't work together, if we don't establish networks of cooperation, if each of us acts alone, we will all lose. We will lose, Mrs. Merkel will win, the neoliberal hegemony will endure, but peoples of Europe will lose. So, the united left of Slovenia, Strujena Levica, the coalition of radical left in Greece, Syriza, the party of European left, 
all the democratic and progressive social and political forces, we all have a common task. To pull Europe out of the deep darkness of neoliberalism. Dear comrades and friends, never before since the end of the Cold War had Europe been so divided and undemocratic. Never before since the end of the Cold War had Europeans be, been so suspicious of each other. Never before since the end of the Cold War had Europeans been so Eurosceptics. This is exactly what motivated my candidacy for the presidency of the European Commission on behalf of the European left. <laughs> to join forces in order to end austerity and regain democracy. To hold back the social processes that revive nationalist tendencies and xenophobia and inflame right-wing populism and extremists. To reunite people and countries that neoliberalism divides. To force the widest possible social and political alliance against austerity. To put forward the solidarity of young women and men, of the working people, of the pensioners and the unemployed in a Europe against the solidarity of the capital. Our solidarity, the solidarity of the people, is the only solidarity that could break through the dichotomy north-south in Europe, that could demolish the new wall of money between creditors and debtors that further divides Europe. Creditor countries and debtor countries. So, our candidacy, the candidacy of the European left, it is not a typical one. It is a mandate, let me say, a mandate for hope and change in Europe. Because the Europe we live in it is not our Europe. This is the Europe of the neoliberal consensus, of the consensus of the conservatives, the liberals, and of the leadership of social democracy. And I'm wondering, the opposite political poll, Mr. Jean-Claude Juncker and Mr. Martin Schulz, the candidates who are supported by the European establishment. If any of those, in any of those, if any of those two candidates is elected, what exactly will he do to immediately end austerity and to immediately end the failed policies of the so-called internal devaluation in Europe? What exactly will he do to finance from European sources balanced and viable growth in Europe? What in particular will he do to hold back the humanitarian crisis in the South Periphery and especially in my country, in Greece? The people of Europe need commitments and actions, not wishes. They don't want politics as usual. They want a break with policies and politics as usual. That's why, that's why they are skeptical about Europe and about European integration. And the Europe of Mr. Junger and Mr. Schulz is exactly the Europe we want to change. In place, In place of a Europe of fear, of unemployment and poverty, in the place of the current Europe that distributes income to the few and fear to the many, 
in place of a Europe in the service of bankers' needs, we want Europe in the service of human needs. Comrades and friends, the European establishment has managed the crisis not in order to resolve it, but in order to rewrite Europe's post-war political economy. In order to trigger the avalanche of capital against labor. That's why Chancellor Merkel in Germany, along with a neoliberal bureaucratic elite in Brussels, treats social solidarity and human dignity as economic distortions and national sovereignty as a nuisance. That's why they are forcing Europe to wear the straight jacket of austerity, discipline, and deregulation. Our own response is straightforward. The European Union will either be democratic or will not exist. And these days, it's proven once again that the greatest threat to democracy in Europe is the rise of fascism, of neo-Nazis. And let me say that the political developments in Ukraine should alarm each and every citizen in Europe. It is unacceptable and dangerous that the European political establishment tolerates the neo-Nazi right sector in positions of power in, in Ukraine. It is unacceptable and, danger, and dangerous that the European political establishment tolerates a prime minister in Ukraine giving Nazi-style salute There are, powerful, there are powerful countries in Europe with the historic responsibility not to let persecution of Jews, minorities, and communists happen again in our continent. What we immediately need in Ukraine is a peaceful settlement for the crisis, of the crisis. The only one who has the right to decide for its future is the Ukrainian people itself in a democratic way. This is our opinion, this is our proposal. Comrades and friends, I want to make clear once again that my candidacy is not a candidacy on behalf of Europe South, even though I'm Greek and Greece was the guinea pig under neoliberal policies all these years. But my candidacy wants to be a candidacy, a candidacy of all European citizens, and especially for the people who suffer from austerity, regardless of their address. Whether they live in the south of Europe, or in the north, or in the east, or the west. Whether they live in Slovenia, or they live in Greece. And we won't particularly address young men and women because for the first time in post-war Europe, a generation of young people expects to be worse off than their parents. The young see their expectations entrapped in the long-term unemployment and the prospects of low wage and jobless growth. Four million jobless under 25s in the Eurozone cannot be tolerated. <laughs> we, 
One in four. One in four young women and men unemployed in Slovenia cannot be tolerated. A lost generation in Europe cannot be tolerated. So we have, we have to act not for them, not for the young people, but with them, with the young people. We have to act with them and we have to act now. Comrades and friends, we are fighting for a democratic, social and ecological Europe, for the democratic reorganization of the European Union, to set in motion the ecological transformation in production, to reform the European immigration framework. We support the immediate repeal of the Memoranda of Austerity and the coordinated reflation of the European economies. We want a genuine European Central Bank acting as lender of last resort, not only for banks, but also for states. We believe that Europe needs its own glass steagall Act in order to separate commercial and investment banking activities and prevent such a dangerous merger of risks into one uncontrolled entity. We want effective European legislation which taxes offshore economic and entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial activities. We support the collective, credible and definite resolution of the Eurozone debt crisis through a European debt conference predicated on the 1953 London Conference for Germany's debt. We try to find a viable solution for Europe. And we believe that we have been vindicated for our criticism to the neoliberal policies in Europe. And we are the only alternative for Europe. In Europe, there are three families. The one is the family of the European Popular Party and the Social Democrats that became more and more, day by day, more conservative, more neoliberal. They don't propose something different for Europe. They believe and they say to us that this is the only road we have to walk, the road of austerity. The other political family is the family that they, they propose to smash the European framework and to come back to the national state. This is the right-wing populists, the extreme right. And the other, the real alternative, is the European left. We don't want to smash the European framework. We want to change the European framework. We want to reconstruct Europe for people's needs. And we believe we believe that this alternative is a realistic one. So, dear comrades and friends, in the May election, the European establishment, I think that, and I believe that, will hear our loud voice. What was the word that you said last year? Gotovsi. Is it right? So, Gotovsi. That means you are finished. So I think that this is a word. This is, this is a word that Mr. Schulz and Mr. Juncker, Mrs. Merkel, Mr. Samaras and Venizelos in Greece should learn as quickly as possible. They should learn Slovenian. They should learn what means God of sin. And let me say a few words about Greece. In Greece, the memorandum of austerity has failed. After four consecutive years of implementation, after six consecutive years of recession, everybody admits that this was 
the bad recipe, the medicine that they gave to Greece, to Greek people, was worse than the illness itself. Mrs. Samaras and Venizelos' coalition government already is at the emergency exit. The entire old world that let the country collapse is at the emergency exit. In the next few months, Syriza will no longer be government in waiting. It will be the first government of the left in the history of Greece. And it will be a government of all Greeks, regardless of their, vo of their votes, regardless of their ideology, of their political convictions. Our electoral victory will signify a radical break with the past of, of Greece. The people and series are together, will march into the long, difficult, but full of hope and positive expectations road of reconstruction and development. But at the same time, the series of victory would create on its own the conditions for policy change and the new political balance in the entire European Union. It will be the beginning of the end of austerity in Europe. So the victory of Syriza will not be a victory only for Greek people, but it will be a hope of change for all European people. Dear comrades and friends, neoliberalism is neither a natural phenomenon, phenomenon nor is it invincible. We are confident that the European left will be the positive surprise of the May election. We are confident that you, Struz and Alevica, the united left in Slovenia, will be the positive surprise of next May elections in Slovenia. And I want you to know that the European left counts on you, cities accounts on you. Your struggle is our struggle, and our struggle is your struggle. We count on you and we all wish you good and victorious struggles. We believe that you will have a very good result in the elections and it will be the first time that a real left Slovenian will be in the European Parliament elected by your voters. I'm sure that we have a very important opportunity, a very big chance in these elections to change Europe, to change the balances, and to create a very a, a, a big hope for everybody in Europe, for the people of Europe, to create a new future of Europe. And I believe that this May will be the May of the European left, will be the May of hope and change in Europe, will be the May of European citizens, will be the May of Ruz and Alevica. <laughs> so thank you very much. I hope the best. I'm sure that you will win. We will win. Thank you very much for your invitation. I'm very happy that I was here with you today. And I'm very optimist for your results, for our results. Thank you very much. Good win.